Hello everyone, this is Better Mix, and today we're gonna see how to fracture wood using the new material, Fracture. Okay, so this is the scene I've been working on using the material Fracture, and you can see, this gives us really nice uh, wood fracture. And I added crack there to just uh, make it more interesting. I added a few textures and stuff. Uh, but you can see this gives us a really nice and interesting uh, wood uh, fracturing. And it's really, really, really simple to do with the new material fracturing in Houdini 17. Uh, so let's see how uh, we can use this. And then later we'll see an overview of this scene that I did. All right, so here's the scene. You can see here's Craig, and it's uh, breaking the uh, fence really cool. And it's actually really simple now with the new material fracturing. So let's create a new geometry node. Uh, let's go ahead and create a box here inside. And let's just make it tall like this, take a wood plank. Like that. Uh, now let's add the uh, RVD material fracture. You can see this is the, the node there or the, the tool. It's not just a simple node, it's a series of nodes. You can actually go inside and you can see there's, it, this is an HDA and it, there's a lot of stuff happening here. But it's really simple. Has a few, a few options here. You can see uh, by default, it creates this uh, concrete fracturing, which is really great. Uh, today, uh, there's also glass, um, you can see th it does the, the kind of a glass fracturing um, patterns, but we want to concentrate on wood for today. You can see for wood, it gives us this really nice, uh, just out of the box, it gives us these really nice patterns uh, for the wood uh, to be broken. And before of this, uh, you had to make your wood, uh, your wood clanks, make them smaller, then stretch them out and do some crazy things. But now with the new Boolean tools in Houdini, it's just very simple to do this. So we're going to see a few of the details here. And you can see there's uh, this option for guide geometry. And you can see what's happening with this. You can see this is the fracture geometry passes. So this is basically what's uh, being fractured basically the final result. The grains are basically the ones that are cutting along the grain of the wood and you can change the amount of this. You can see by default, it uh, direct, detects the direction. If if the if the plank has uh, the, the longer side, it's going to be the direction of, for this. So if you have your planks already in, in in this kind of a shape, it, it, it will know what direction to fracture it. If not, you can change this vector here to change the direction. But overall, it's just pretty, it's pretty um, intelligent to know which direction you need to go. Now here, the spacing is how much of those you're going to need. You can see if I increase the spacing, I'm going to get less of those grains. So you don't, you don't put like a number, you just uh, put like a spacing and you say, all right, I have this amount of uh, cutters there and they are cut in this direction. Uh, the offset is the offset from the point they are, um, the origin, let's say, let's, if you don't put any uh, offset, they're going to be like straight on, on uh, like really regular. Let's say if we, if we remove the nose, you can see what I'm talking about. You can see now the cuts are really regular. One uh, between them, there is the same distance. If you put an offset, they're going to offset from that uh, original position they were created from. You can see now the space here is bigger, here is smaller, and all that stuff. You can change the seed of that if you want another distribution and, and all that things. Now the grain nose, you can see I reduced it and now we have just straight uh, cutters here. So one thing is the element size is how detailed these guys will be and your height is how much noise these guys will have. You can see if I put the height bigger, they're gonna be, the, the noise is bigger. And if I reduce the size of this, the, the, uh, the shape or the frequency of the noise is gonna be smaller. Uh, 
So yeah, that's uh, that's that. The grain size is going to be for the from the inside of this. You can see it gives less detail here inside. So if you want more detail, you actually reduce this. Uh, and this will be good when you have a lot of uh, grain noise. And that is good for the inside uh, uh, detail of your wood planks. Uh, now, if we go to the, and you can enable or disable this uh, hard here, the cranes. If we go to the cut, now we have the cuts are in the other direction. Now, if we switch here to cuts, you can see there are these guys. We're cutting the geometry uh, along in the uh, vertical axis. And again, it's using the, the, the bounding box to calculate that. Uh, again, same controls, the spacing, you can control how much of those you want. The offset is the same thing and the offset seed is the same. You can change the seed to have different distributions there. Uh, just randomizing that. And now here the noise is the same thing for the for these guys. The splitters are on top of this cutter. There's another cutter right there where this where this uh uh grain this cut is gonna be you can see if we change to the splitters it kind of creates this cutter or, or kind of modifies that cutter to be this irregular shape or jaggy edge to give us those splinters where the uh, where the wood would uh, fracture. And you can, again, tell how much noise you want on that, which is going to give you more splinter or less splinters. And uh, the length, again, is the same. In this case, the length is kind of the, the amplitude of the noise. And the splitters is the uh, the frequency of that. Uh, and now let's go to uh, let's put an an exploded view, and you can see something uh, uh, interesting here. You can see there's all the pieces are separated, but you can see not everything is separated. You can see some uh, stuff is it's um, clustering basically. Uh, because there is uh, this cluster, the, the detail it's just for the tranquilizing of the um, the surface. Uh, the clusters you can see if we go now to uh, oh the constraint networks that's another thing that uh, sorry Houdini just creates the uh, constraints for 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 you. Uh, let's talk about the clusters and then we can talk about constraints. Uh, in the clustering. Uh, you can see now, right now it's enabled, and that means that uh, uh, pieces that are um, in a radius, basically like this, you can you can visualize the clusters. You click here in this little uh, pin there. Uh, you can see the clusters are being uh, grouped, basically. So it's not everything just uh, like pieces tend to look more natural when you cluster them. If you want to reduce this, the clustering, you can reduce this size here and you can see there are less clusters now, but it's not completely, everything is not completely uh, uh, alone, let's say. Uh, if we disable it completely, you can see that's that's no clustering at all. If we cluster it, some pieces get clustered, some not. It depends on this size. If you put this too high, you can have a lot of clusters like that. And that's going to be uh, helpful for when you simulate this and how it, this is going to actually break. So let's uh, reduce the clustering a little bit. I don't want too much clustering. Let's leave it like that. So, and oh, I turned that off. I don't want to. Let's turn this off and uh, turn that off. Okay, now the... Um, if you go to wireframe, you can see these red lines there, and those are the clusters uh, being constrained here. As you can see, the uh, it creates already the uh, glue networks for the uh, for the plank how it's going to behave in in dynamics. So this is really cool because it's already giving us uh, what we need for for our RBDs, and it's really simple. You can see if we go and put this guy up here. Let me create a new DOP network for this because I'm using the same file that I created all this stuff with. So I just uh, got in and out there to, to activate that. So when I use this uh, rigid body tool, let's uh, use the glue object here, a really glue object. I had uh, the, the plank selected. Uh, so let's go in here and you can see 
creates all these networks and we already have the glue constraints here uh, that came from from the, the network we already had from the RVD uh, material fracturing. So let's create a gravity node, a gravity uh, force. Let's put it over, uh, let's put it here. And let's create, uh, uh, let's do it here from the shelf. It's simpler, ground plane. It's gonna add it here. Uh, I don't wanna see the other one. And now if we uh, play this, you can see now this is breaking and it's breaking according to those clusters we uh, specified basically. Let me do this. So you can see it's breaking there and uh, the glue uh, constraint, it's, it's, it's here. You can see if we reduce this strength, uh, we it's gonna break more now it's breaking more it breaks too much so you can see now you can control how much that's gonna break and that's breaking really nice actually <laughs> okay so that is the, the, the overview of this it's really simple to set up all this you don't have to uh, do this setup for these uh, glue networks and, and everything. It's really done for, for you with the tool. And uh, now let's overview what I did uh, with the other one, which is it's basically the same thing, but I just created a fence here. Uh, just created one board, added some UVs and copy it around. You can see I even added some uh, beveling uh, to make it more interesting. I just made some copies, then uh, grab the same board, make it uh, horizontally, added some bevel again, and making two copies, added UVs, and that's what I, how I made me my fence there. Then I uh, created this RVD uh, fracture uh, here, and you can see it's taking a, a while because there's more pieces, and uh, I'm using one other feature, here, uh, you can see I'm using this fracture by piece and that it's helping me because uh, the, the tool is going of each one of these planks at a time and it's it's detecting the right direction for each one of those. If I don't do that, it's gonna actually be cutting it, everything in this direction because that's the longer side. Uh, doing it one by one, it knows that this one is it's going in this direction. Uh, those supports are going in that direction so it actually creates the right uh, the right grain for those and the right direction for the uh, for the pieces so after that I did some stuff here for cleanup and all the stuff it's not really that um, much important here uh, but then after that I created uh, when I cache that I have this which is basically just um, having crack here I just uh, selected crag and uh, selected this guy crag and used the deforming object to make this uh, an active object, active uh, the uh, deforming object, so we can collide with that. And you can see crag is uh, right here. Here's the node for crag. You can see here this uh, just um, modify the division size here to have more density for the uh, hammer there to be. Um, because by default it wasn't getting the right uh, divisions to to collide with the, the, the with the fence there, and then I modified the glue constraint to have it uh, be uh, be uh, some strength that uh, will be enough to stay in in place, but uh, but not uh, so enough so it breaks but it stays in place. Uh, the other thing is that uh, instead of using the actual um, the actual constraints that come with the the tool, I actually created a new constraint to constrain the fence to the floor, actually, so it doesn't fall. And that is really simply done. You just select your uh, go here inside here and and just uh, do the um, drive simulation. No, not drive simulation. It's not that rigid bodies. And I just use this tool glue adjacent. Select that. Select the the, um, the fence here, and then select the floor, which is here. And then it just creates us uh, the the same glue constraints between those two objects, and it just helps me get the fence stay in place. Um, then I just um, 
added some extra detail here for keeping an area to be active not i don't want it to simulate all the fence because i just i just knew that just this area is going to be broken so i just created a group here uh here this group is going to it's saying just this area is going to be the one that it simulated everything outside of here is just not going to be simulated so i'm just uh, creating that group and i'm just saying uh, wherever is in this group make it active Everything else is not going to be active. So that that way I just uh, isolate that area so I don't have to be worrying about the other areas around there. And and that's basically it. It's, it's not that hard actually to do. It's very simple stuff. So if you want to uh, learn more details about all the glue constraints and activating stuff and all that stuff, controlling geometry, uh, you can see this excellent tutorial by, it's, it's a brick wall destruction by, by Mark Spevic, and he does a great um, overview and a great uh, tutorial on, on how to control those parts, how to control some areas, how to give it more uh detail make it more interesting and all that stuff so i really really recommend you see this tutorial if if you're not uh if you are not um that comfortable with glue constraints and in activating object deactivating object and, and adding forces to them and all that stuff so you can see the uh the actual uh dot network is really simple the, uh, the only forces here or things that are actually moving the stuff is the gravity this glue object is affecting them. And then I added some drag to the pieces so that they don't spin out of control. And uh, and and that's it, it's real simple. And uh, the new fracturing uh, tools in Houdini 17 are amazing to get results really quickly and move on with your life. So, all right guys, I'm gonna show you the final animation again. And uh, that's gonna be it for now. Yeah, remember if you want this this file, this original file that I created with this animation right here, you can get it from a Patreon uh, when you support us for, with uh, $5 or more. And you get all the heap files that I, we use here in this uh, series of, of tips here. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope you learned something. I hope you can do your effects faster and get faster home. And uh, Let's keep learning together. I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.